dividing up the world's bread basket. Rich countries are racing to buy and lease agricultural land abroad and secure their food supplies for the future. Critics are calling it a colonial land grab. The scale is something we've never seen before. I mean, there are huge pieces of land, six million acres in the Congo, bought by China to grow palm oil. It's reported 40 million hectares of land has been bought or leased in $100 billion worth of deals. Now the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization is proposing a code of conduct to guide the global land grab. Governments need to be much more uh, assertive that the moment they're signing away huge pieces of uh, their territory for very little money and very few guarantees, the deals are secret. Uh, so if we had some more transparency, if you could see what the deals were, local people could do something about it and get a better deal. Not only are wealthy companies directly buying and leasing land around the world, they've also started to form local partnerships with companies. And this is so they can get a direct stake in their agricultural industry. Now one of the companies that's leading the way is actually right here in Qatar. Hassad Food is aiming to not only guarantee Qatar's food security, but become a global food supplier. We are targeting crops and type of food. So, uh, for instance, if we are talking about sugar, then it has to be in, in Latin America, precisely in Brazil, or it could be in India. If we are targeting wheat, then it has to be somewhere in Australia, or in Latin America, or in even Eastern, Eastern Europe. He says he doesn't know why some people are alarmed about their business. I have no idea at all. But maybe the stereotype of, uh, of the wealthy countries grabbing the, the, the feed from the, the poor uh, countries. From Sudan to Romania, anywhere that can grow food is now prime real estate, after governments were rocked by food riots last year. One of the most aggressive buys has been Saudi Arabia. It's setting up a chain of 1,000 square kilometre farms abroad and plans to ship the food directly to the kingdom. And it seems food prices are about to go back up. The food prices bottomed out in about March and now they're going up. They're already to where, where they were in 2007. Uh, if you look at the graph, it's quite scary. A global grab for land. The question is, will there be enough of it to go around? Nicole Johnston, Al Jazeera, Doha. Devlin Kriak is at the World Food Security Summit in Rome. He works for Grain, an international non-profit organization that supports small farmers. He says the problem of land grabbing has spiraled out of control. Some farmers' organizations I've talked to have said, hey, if you're going to come in and negotiate a, a price and you want to have, uh, you want to buy, purchase food from us, well, we're prepared to sit down at the table with you. But if you want to come in here and buy our farmland, control our farmland and, and decide where that food is going to be going, there's no way. There's no way we're going to, sit, we're going to allow for that to happen. So, of course, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a better scenario, what you've mentioned. But the, the reality is that the private investors these days are interested in taking control of the food system. We've identified about $100 billion now being uh, mobilized to buy up farmland, okay, to, get inv to invest in taking over farms. It's a major new trend. Everything we've heard here says that nobody is dealing with the, the importance of this issue, the significance of this issue. We're talking about vague codes of conduct that have no teeth. Nobody's addressing the fundamental problem, so it's no surprise that you're seeing countries taking these extreme measures and, and outsourcing their, their food production. Really, we have to start looking at how can we get support to farmers? How can small-scale farmers who make up 80% of those who are the hungry in the world today, 80% of that 1 billion who are in the hungry today are small farmers, how can we get support to them to help them produce food, not only for their families and for the local communities, but there could be ways of producing more food globally. And that's a long-term scenario. I mean, this is long-term thinking. Not everyone agrees with that perspective. Fahad al Atiyah is the chairman of Qatar's National Food Security Program. He says his government is working closely with local farmers and is investing in their community, not taking away their land. I think the simple fact is that if there is no investment in these countries, these countries would suffer from um, low supply of food. Um, we're not trying to take any food away from them. In fact, we're trying to empower them um, through cooperation and partnership um, to help them feed themselves and feed uh, and get trade with others by supplying Qatar and other countries around the world. It is not at all land grab as, m as some may perceive it. Uh, it is indeed a, um, a, a partnership between countries like Qatar that has a, pr a food production issue because of the, um, the climate, because of water scarcity. Um, but, uh, but taking land away from, 
from people, taking in fact food away from people, that's not at all what we're in for. It all depends on the approach, it all depends who you're talking about, which company you're talking about. Um, we in Qatar, we took the approach that we will work with local farmers, we will work with local communities. In fact, it cannot just work without them. Um, dealing with countries, dealing with statesmen at the federal level or at the high level in government uh, does not necessarily work all the time. Um, having to sustain this on the long run, we have to work with local farmers.